Hey everyone, it's Chris, and welcome to another part of our uh, tutorial series for our Mario clone. What we're going to do in this tutorial is uh, we're going to um, make the question blocks interactive. So up until now, all we could do is just jump on them or, or jump on or, or try to hit them from below, and, and nothing actually would happen. So what we want though is we want those question blocks one. We want them to uh, to jump up a bit to uh, give the impression that we actually hit those really hard. So they're going to bounce up a little bit and bounce back down. And um, then after that, uh, we want those question blocks to, uh, we, we want them to appear empty because what's inside of them is going to be a coin. So there's going to be a coin that bounces up out of the block, shoots up, and at the same time, the block is going to turn from a question block into an empty block, indicating that the uh, block no longer holds a coin or anything else, and that it is now empty. Um, so, and then we are going to cancel the uh, the part of the block being able to bounce when the player hits it with a head with his head. So, we're uh, we're going to implement all that, and uh, to get started, we're going to go ahead and open up the uh, question block class. And you know what we should do first, though. Uh, let's close that and go to our question block prefab uh, all right <clears throat> and in here we're going to add a component we're going to add the question block class all right so now what we need to do is now that our uh, now that our question block has the uh, the question block class we can go ahead and go to our scripts and load our question block class and uh, we're going to go ahead and start filling stuff out. All right. Um, so the first thing we talked about is making the block bounce. So let's go ahead and uh, do what we need to do to get that to work. Uh, when we're talking about bouncing, we want to um, we want to be able to uh, control how the bounce happens. So we want to control the bounce height and we want to control how fast the bounce happens. So we're going to create two variables for that, um, and we're going to modify those in the inspector. So we're going to make sure they're public, and they're going to be floats. So the bounce height, um, let's go ahead and set that to a default of 0.5f, and the bounce speed, <clears throat> let's go ahead and set that to uh, four. And um, then we're going to create a bool because remember we said we want to be able to only bounce the block once and then set it to an empty and then cancel it. So we need to be able to have a variable to control that state. And we're going to create this as a private variable and uh, it's going to be a boolean and we're going to call it can bounce. And initially this is going to be set to true. Okay. <clears throat> so and since when we are um, when we're bouncing the block we need uh, some way to uh, reference its original position so that when we bounce it back, we know where to bounce it back to. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and also create a, um, let's make it private. I'm going to create a vector2 uh, to store the original position of the block. Okay, and uh, we're going to initialize that variable in our start method when our class gets initialized. So original position is transform dot local position and transform because um, the script is on the uh, question block so we're going to get its transform dot local position set it to the original position vector <clears throat> and then uh, we're going to create a method named uh, let's see here actually we're going to create a public method because the public method that we're going to create here is um, question block bounce and that's going to be called from our player class when the uh, player interacts with the uh, with the block okay so what we need to do is we need to check to see if the block can bounce okay because we only want it to bounce that once if it can bounce then we're going to immediately set it to false that it can't bounce ever again and um, then, uh, let's see here, we're going to need to add some code to actually create the bouncing effect, right? So we're not going to create that in this method. We're actually going to create 
uh, what's called a coroutine. And uh, I'm going to explain a little later what the coroutines are actually for or what they do or how they operate. Um, just know right now that we're going to create a coroutine. And coroutines are created a little bit, uh, almost the same as methods, but uh, they're actually, <clears throat> they're I enumerators. And we're going to call this coroutine bounce. Okay. And um, we're going to fill that out in just a little bit. First, we're going to go back to our. Um, <clears throat> we're going to go back to our uh, question block bounce method, and uh, right below can bounce equals false, we're going to call our coroutine. And the way we do that is we're going to use a method right here, start coroutine, and uh, this uh, wants the method name, so we can just uh, basically pass it bounce which is the name of our method. And this will call this bounce method, okay? Or bounce coroutine. So, in that coroutine, we are going to need uh, two while loops. Uh, one while loop is going to change the position of our question block. It's going to iterate and change our position over time. And it's going to increment the position of the block, make it go up. And then we're going to create another while loop that's going to decrement our position and make it go back down. Okay, so these while loops that we're creating are going to be endless while loops um, to start with. Okay, while true that basically is going to run forever. And we're going to make another one while true and run forever. Okay, so. Um, the first thing we need to do in our while loop is we need to um, set our local position we're going to set it equal to a new vector 2 and uh, the position that we're going to uh, change it to is going to just simply be uh, transform that posi our local position dot x Okay, because we're not actually changing in the x direction, so we're passing it its original x position. Um, in the y position, though, we are going to uh, get its original transform, or its current transform, dot local position, dot y, and we're going to increment that by bounce speed, our uh, speed that we specified for how fast we want to go, and we're going to multiply that by time dot delta time. Okay. So at every iteration of this while loop, our position is going to increment by our bounce speed times time the delta time. And uh, from here, what we need to do is, uh, because we want to at some point stop the block from going up, right? And that's our limitation, that's our bounce height. So we want to check if transform dot local position dot y is greater than or equal to <clears throat> the original position, so where it was before, dot y, plus our bounce height. Okay, so if that equals true, okay, so if it's greater than or equal to that, then we want to uh, basically just bail out of this while loop and, and, and stop it. Okay? We don't want to continue this while loop, we're done. Um, finally, um, for our, for our enumerator, or actually not our, um, not our coroutine, but our while loop, so that our while loop doesn't actually lock up our um, interface, we have to uh, yield return null. Okay? And I will explain how that works in just a little bit. Um, for now, we are going to go ahead and create the second while loop, and basically it's going to be the same as the first, except for it's going to go down. So we're going to set transform.localPosition uh, equal to new vector 2 and we're going to get its uh, transform uh, local position dot x value and then we're going to do um, transform the current transform dot local position dot y minus oops, got a comma transform 
dot local position dot y minus bounce speed times time dot delta time. Okay. So it's basically doing the same thing as the other while loop except for this one is decrementing instead of incrementing. Um, and we have to do the same thing here if <clears throat> transform dot local position dot y is less than or equal to the original position dot y um, we want to then make sure that we actually uh, we don't want to just break out um, we want to uh, oops. we want to actually change the position of our transform to equal the original position. And all that does is it, it ensures that uh, the block is exactly where it's supposed to be and not um, like 0 0.01 pixels too far or whatever. It's, it's going to put it back exactly where it has to be. <clears throat> okay. So after that, after we've done that, we can go ahead and break out of the while loop. And finally, we're going to add yield return null so we don't lock anything up. All right. So that okay. that should do it for our question block script as far as um, it bouncing. So uh, the one more thing we need to do is uh, we need to go into our player class and we need to uh, we need to actually call this um, this method this question block bounce method. So in our player class uh, where we're checking the uh, the ceiling ray casts, yeah, we need to um, we need to find out what we're colliding with, okay? And uh, we can do that <clears throat> simply by uh, using the uh, hit object info. So we're using hit ray a collider dot tag. And uh, we're checking if that equals question block. And if it does, we are going to go ahead and get the uh, component of that collider. And we're going to get the uh, question block class and uh, call question block bounce from there. Okay. And uh, that should initiate the bounce. Um, one more thing we might have to do here is uh, I don't think we created the uh, question block tag and assigned it to the question block prefab. So let's have a look and see if we need to do that. So let's go to prefabs and go to question block. And um, yeah, tag is there. Okay, so we're good with that. And let's check our question blocks here. They are updated with the script and they all have the question block tag. So now we should be able to strike any one of those and they should bounce up and down once. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that out. Let's first kill this enemy so he doesn't get in the way. All right, bounce, bounce, bounce. Oops. Bounce. No more bouncing. Okay. Bounce. And now it can't bounce. Okay. So it's behaving exactly as we wanted it to, which is great. Um, so I'm going to end this here. And at the uh, next tutorial, we are going to pick up um, right where we left off. And we're going to add uh, some more functionality to these. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add the, um, the code that actually changes this. Uh, blinking uh, question mark sprite to an empty block sprite and we're going to add some more coroutines that'll actually shoot up a coin out of this uh, question mark when we're striking it from below. Okay, so uh, that's it for now and uh, stay tuned and I'll see you guys soon.